What's up and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. So I'm really excited here at CES. Big shout out and thank you to Asus for helping sponsor this CES trip. They help cover the travel costs out here. Just big thank you to them making this happen. That said, no brand has any control over my content. I am free to be honest about all the pros and cons about Asus laptops and any other laptops. If you value authentic and honest reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now, Asus has said they're going to send me the Zephyrus Duo. Yes! I'm really excited about running it through my full suite of benchmarks and tests and games and seeing how it holds up against the competition. The Asus Zephyrus Duo is the revolutionary new dual screen gaming laptop. Back when the ZenBook Duo 14 first came out, I was like, hey guys, you guys have got to make a gaming laptop like this. Make it 16 inches, make the base thicker, you know, it should still be pretty portable. Dual screens just would be amazing with a gaming laptop set up like this. And I was like really pushing them to do it. You know, it's a couple years later, but they finally made it. And I'm super excited because this thing, it looks awesome and it looks really well executed. Sasha says they were already making it when I suggested it, but he just couldn't say anything because it was an unannounced product, but I'm pretty sure they got the idea from me. <laughs> it's still, still, it's cool to think. Uh, that they did. Anyway, the Zephyrus Duo is a multitasking king. Perfect for working with code, live streaming, video editing, you know, working with spreadsheets, having email going on one screen, watching your sports game on the other screen, depending on, you know, the type of user you are. Now, if you're all about being as productive as you can possibly be, this thing is for you. It's freaking amazing. All right, so the Zephyrus Duo has true dual screen functionality on the go without sacrificing your traditional laptop experience. They did this by utilizing a magnetic keyboard deck, which we'll get into here in a moment. Now, now the 320 degree hinge comes with a 90 degree kickstand that felt extremely sturdy, very strong pivot point that's not gonna let that thing fall over and it's very grippy rubber. So it, it just, it literally felt like it was very, very stable when it was sitting on the desk in front of me. Now you're pretty much gonna only do the dual screen function when you're on a desk, or maybe I guess if you're in laptop mode and you're not using the keyboard deck, but yeah, for the most part, you're gonna be using this on a table whenever you're in dual screen mode. This comes with several different modes that you can use it in. The first one is obviously the displays stacked horizontally. And this is gonna be great for having like OBS on the bottom and then you're live streaming a video game on the top, or you have the live stream window preview on the top with OBS and the live stream chat on the bottom, but that's gonna be super helpful. Now the second mode is a really great productivity mode that they call desktop mode or book mode, which is where the displays are vertically stacked. And this vertical stack is gonna give you lots of vertical real estate to see like, you know, if you're a coder, you can see tons of line of text. If you're a writer, you can see tons of lines of, you know, your book or whatever you're working on without having to scroll as much. You know, if you're a manga reader, you can see it like the whole page of manga, or you can also share this with a friend by putting it into tent mode or by laying it flat on a table. And then you can do this with duplicating the screen or having, you know, two separate things on both of the screens at the same time. Could you have a virtual machine on both screens so that you could have a separate keyboard and mouse and you could theoretically put this into tent mode and like literally share this computer with like your wife or your girlfriend or your best friend and you could both be using it like at like breakfast across from each other that would be pretty cool actually using the displays in stacked mode felt very sturdy like it wasn't going to go anywhere um the hinges are really tight the screen does not wobble you, you know I, I literally put the screen down most of the way and it stops like a few inches right from the other screen. It's, it just, it felt like a really well executed version of a dual screen monitor. Asus has been doing this type of thing for a few years now. And the first version, you know, the hinge wasn't as good. Yeah, you know, there's a bigger gap between the displays and it's getting better and better. Now, the, they also have the, the ZenBook Duo, which has an even tinier gap. But the downside is that one does not have a dedicated GPU like the Zephyrus Duo. And it's only a 14 inch display, so it's a lot smaller overall in terms of size. Um, that said, the gap between those two displays is really tiny. And that's one area that I think Asus could still work on. They could make the gap smaller. The desktop mode would feel better. Everything would feel a little bit more seamless. One area for improvement on the next iteration of this device. Now this comes with an Intel CPU in this bad boy. It's got the new two nanometer Intel Core Ultra 
386H with 16 cores, 16 threads. This features four performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and four NPU high efficiency cores. For the GPU, you can get this with an RTX 5070 Ti or the RTX 5090, and this can go up to 100 and 35 watts. Now, now, interestingly enough, they're not doing an RTX 5080 at all. At least they did not announce an 80, 5080 version. They're just going like, do you want the more budgety 5070 Ti or do you want the high-end 5090? Those are your two options. A lot of people are gonna either go all out or they're gonna go for that budget 5070 Ti version, which the 5070 Ti or the 5090, either one is gonna be able to play games on high settings for a long time to come. Obviously the 5090 will be a bit more powerful, Okay, quite a bit more powerful, but given the fact that it's only 135 watts, that maxes the silicon in the 5070 Ti pretty much. It has 140 watt cap, 135, you're like 97% of the way there. Now, when it comes to the 5090 though, that can go up to 175 watts and you're missing out on 40 potential watts going into the system. So that means you're gonna have approximately a 20% performance reduction, maybe 15% performance reduction compared to a fully powered RTX 5090, such as in the SCAR 16 or the Legion Pro 7i. So that's probably one of the biggest things that you're sacrificing going for this system, especially because this is gonna be a very expensive gaming laptop because I mean it's a dual screen touch enabled stylus enabled OLED 120 hertz crazy specs on this and so it's going to be obviously very expensive. Let's talk about the displays. You get two 2880 by 1800 at 120 hertz refresh rate, 500 nits sustained brightness with 1100 nits HDR peak brightness and that matches the very best OLED you could potentially buy with your money. So I really like the specs on paper for these displays, especially since they're touch enabled and stylus enabled. So artists are gonna be able to use this for drawing. And if you lay in bed, you can easily control things like Netflix or whatever. Or if you're in tent mode with a friend, they don't need a keyboard and mouse. They can just use the touch enabled display to browse the internet, for example. Since this is an OLED, it's gonna have extremely high levels of contrast, deep inky blacks, bright peaky whites, and 100% DCI P3 color gamut with an anti-glare coating, which helps prevent reflections from ruining your display experience. And it comes with G-Sync and Advanced Optimus for a better gaming experience, as well as improving your gaming performance in CPU bound games. Now for ports, you get two Thunderbolt 4s with power delivery of up to 100 watts, 40 gigabit throughput, and you get display port out on these as well. Now you get two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2s, one 3.5 millimeter combo headphone microphone port, and an HDMI 2.1. And you get a full-size UHS-2 high-speed card reader. So you get quite a few port outs on this. Now this comes with a full HD IR Windows Hello supported webcam. And storage has two M.2 slots in it with either a one or two terabyte drive, depending on whether you get a 5070 Ti or a 5090. Now the Wi-Fi is triple band, two by two Wi-Fi 7, should be very, very good Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 6.0. So the latest pretty much in Bluetooth technology, which is great to see. Now the keyboard and mouse is basically just like the Zephyrus G16 keyboard and mouse. You get the same layout, the same feel, but the 2026 keyboard backlight has been improved and there's much less gaps in the backlight look to it. So it's just a higher quality overall backlight experience. Finally, I mean, how many years did it take for them to get it right? I think this one's better. We'll have to see when I actually get it in hand what I think about it after long-term usage. The cool thing about the keyboard deck is that it is fully detachable and it connects with electronic pins that charge an onboard battery so that when you detach the keyboard, it'll automatically switch to Bluetooth mode. When you connect it back onto the lower display, it'll automatically connect back with the pins for low latency input on the keyboard and trackpad. So there's no Bluetooth delay. Now I really wish the new Bluetooth would have better latency for things like mouse and keyboards and controller support. I probably would not want to game with the keyboard detached. I don't know, maybe. That's a potential con that I'll have to figure out after I get the laptop in hand. In my experience, it only took a few seconds for the laptop to automatically switch between wired with the pins mode. I mean, it's not really wired, but it's the electric pins communicating for the keyboard and mouse. And then pulling that off, it automatically connected with Bluetooth. And it was pretty much a seamless experience. Like, like you take that keyboard deck off, you start setting up the kickstand, you get the laptop into like stacked mode or desktop mode. And by the time you're in that point, the keyboard and touchpad are already connected with Bluetooth and you're ready to go. 
go. So it's a very seamless overall experience. And the trackpad also is basically the same as a Zephyr's G16 glass trackpad, same ultra large size and great overall feel. Now for build and materials, this has a CNC milled aluminum chassis. Uh, stellar gray is the color they're calling it. And it gives off a great feel in the hand. It feels super tight and very, very well built. At 6.17 pounds, the Zephyrus Duo is like, a, it's like the Scar 16 in terms of its size. It's, it's quite a bit bigger. But unlike the Scar 16, it has two displays and a detachable keyboard. So there's a lot more display functionality than something like the Scar, but the Scar has better performance as the trade-off. Compared to the Zephyrus G16 coming in at 4.3 pounds, you're talking about 1.8 pounds difference. Adding the keyboard deck, the dual screens, the touch functionality, all of that adds considerable weight. But I think this is more like a desktop replacement. Like as weird as that is to say, the Zephyrus Duo is kind of like the ultimate desktop replacement. If having the ability to pop this sucker open and immediately have dual screens for video editing or for live streaming, that's just a huge advantage. I did recently make a four screen laptop video. If you missed it, go check it out. It's the Zephyrus Duo 16 from 2023 paired with a Mon Duo 16, uh, like dual screens on the sides. Now, that in theory, I think would still be a little bit better than the Zephyrus Duo in terms of multi-screen functionality because you get four screens, but that one also is not nearly as portable. You have to take a whole second thing with you. Overall, the Zephyrus Duo fills my craving for multi-screen live streaming video editing dream machine almost perfectly. I just wish it had like 175 watt GPU TDP. That's probably the number one thing that I wish they just made it another like quarter inch thicker and another quarter pound heavier and just made that heat sink vapor chamber whatever they're using on the inside a little bit better so they could up the wattage but that wasn't the priority that's okay like it's still going to be pretty dang powerful and i mean i'm not even using the 5090 as my main laptop i'm using the 5070 ti right now and it's crushing all the games i want to play anyway so i think it's a really cool design and i i I think the, the main downsides for me are the Bluetooth delay of the keyboard and trackpad. Those are the two things. And then I guess maybe also the fact that it's not the HX, like higher end version of Intel CPUs that are more the desktop side. I mean, that's kind of what you get for a more portable laptop, but this is a weird mixture of portability meets multi-screen functionality that then also makes it so it's not as portable. So I'm like, Maybe they should have just made it a little bit thicker, threw the desktop CPU in there, ramped the GPU TDP wattage to 175 watts, and then it would be like, all right, now we're talking about the ultimate desktop replacement multi-screen device. But as it is, it's still a very attractive device. So let me know what you think, especially if you're in the market for a 5070 Ti and you're okay with not getting the very, very top end of the silicon stack. I still think this thing is going to be freaking awesome. So that's the Zephyrus Duo. Lots of videos coming to you soon. We'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. No, no.